My name is Kendall Hirsch. I am a junior biology student at Radford University with a pre-health concentration. And this year I traveled to the Amazon to study medicinal plants and their antibiotic features. There are over 130,000 different species of plants in this world. And of those plants, maybe 5,000 of those species have actually made it to a lab to be tested for any medicinal qualities. And of those 5,000, maybe 95 products have been possibly made. So whatever happened to the other 125,000? The amount of treatment is unfathomable and we've never even reached out to try. After getting adjusted to the area, I immediately dove into my work by exploring with people from the area to help me find the plants that I needed to study. And then I went out into the forest to collect my medicinal plants. And I got four plants, Sangre de Drago or Blood of the Dragon. It's a very popular medication used within the city and within the, the jungle. Even people here in the States, like Dr. Davis uses Sangre de Drago. If you get a cut, you put it on to heal the cut, basically. So Neosporin. It suds up almost like soap and then turns into a parafilm, which is clear, and it acts as like a natural band-aid over the cut. So you're making the process so much quicker by applying this one medicine rather than using band-aids and Neosporin constantly washing it. It's all done in one. I studied other things such as old man's fingers, which was a type of fungus. It's used for a lot of ear infections. Ficus insipida. The people that worked at our station used ficus insipida for stomach aches and for flus. Arcosacha, another cutaneous one that we use. You have to heat the leaves by a fire for hours and then squeeze the leaves onto the abrasion. After collecting the samples, I started growing my bacteria treatment. I swabbed at least five participants from our group and um, took samples from their hands and grew them on plates so I could naturally grow hand bacteria that these people were touching every single day that we were in the jungle. So if you were to get a cut, what bacteria would actually grow in that cut? Because the things that you're touching is most likely the things that are going to go into a cut. So I grew that bacteria and it took maybe one day or two because the forest was so humid and so warm that it was a natural incubator. So I divided my growth dishes into a cross section of four different medicines. And so I applied the medicines in each cross section and I waited. When I was looking at my plates and I saw the droplet areas of where I applied my medicine, I would notice that there would either be growth growing right up to the medicine or that the growth would go away from the medicine. And I was really happy to see that I had these great big circles of clear gel on my growth plate showing that my medicine had killed whatever had been there. And once I did see that it killed bacteria, I isolated the bacteria to find out which bacteria it was killing. I took a lot of data collection, a lot of note taking, and I brought that back with me to the States. And now I'm digging even deeper into the specific bacteria that I found to see the types of diseases that grow around that type of bacteria and see if a kind of plant actually kills the disease. I really wanted to satisfy the needs of the people that live down there who are so interested in their medicine because that is their main source of medicine. You see that when you go into market that there's tons of little shops filled with little beakers that have no label on it, but if you tell them your symptoms, they just give you a remedy. So to actually prove to them that there's antibiotic qualities within their plants was the most rewarding thing I could find, and I did find that and I found some pretty amazing things. It's time to give credit to the most truest medicine of them all, which is the plants that surround us and the world that we're in.